Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless of the Poor, located here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. Sitting next to me is my beautiful wife, Dana Salter Rudd. And she has a great ministry called God is Able. She loves to help the disabled. But today's Bible study, we're going to be looking at killing giants. You know, David killed giants. He taught his men how to kill giants. But we have a lot of giants in our lives. Some of them are fear, some of them are loneliness, and a lot of them are lust, just to name a few. And that's what we do for our outward expression in a lot of times. You know, drugs is an outward expression of fear. Uh, alcohol is an outward expression of loneliness. So a lot of things that we go through with these giants causes us to act out in these things that we do negatively in our bodies and in our sin. But today, we're going to look at how David had a weapon. He didn't even have a sword. He had an inner weapon called shield of faith. And we're going to see how he used it. And we're going to look at the Psalms 27 on how he spiritually got with God to show how he can worship God to destroy that inner giant. So as I always say, sit back Get your Bible, get your paper, get your pen, and get ready for a mighty word from God. There you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless. I'm going to let my wife pray, and we are going to get ready into the mighty word of God right now. Come on, baby. Let's say Amen. a prayer for these people out here who need to destroy these giants. Come yes. on now. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We just yes. believe in God today, Lord God, is the message being brought forth. Yes, Lord. Killing giants, Lord God, and that these souls will be set free, Lord God, mm. in Jesus' name. And Lord, Lord, those that did not come, Lord, we pray for those, Lord God. Yes, it's the first of the month, Father. Lord God. You mm. will touch them, Lord, and the minister first of the month. to them, Lord God, and we claim your healing and your touch right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So since Ron gave us an awesome prayer, I hope everybody got their Bibles. And I'm just going to say a short one, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us open this word that we will be in the built up. Yes. Uh, let me decrease so that you may increase. Amen. I know it's the first of the month, Lord. There's a lot of faces that normally are here that are not here. Uh, so I ask you to protect them while they're gone. Kill that giant. That's me and your spirit. I ask these things in Jesus' name. And let the house say amen. 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 Well, I want you to take your Bibles and go to 1 Samuel. This morning's lesson is going to be talking about killing giants. Okay. Now, I taught this a little while ago back here, but it went over some people's head. They told it was too big. But you know what? You've been here long enough to know. You've been here when I've been talking about having God's favor. You've been here when I was talking about, you know, getting the joy of the Lord to the Spirit and all this stuff. I've been just preaching to a lot of them. And the Holy Spirit just told me to bring this to you. Amen? Amen. So, we're going to be talking about killing giants, and let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Everybody knows this familiar story of David and Goliath, right? Even if you don't read your Bible, you heard the story of David and Goliath. You know, they made cartoons about it, did all kinds of things about it. So, but let's see what God says about it, amen? amen. So, 1 Samuel 17, and we're going to start at verse 40. And read all the way down, okay? When you get when you get there, say amen. 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 All right. All right. Verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even in the script. And in the sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Why did I jump all the way into this story? Because I believe most of you already know the story. So we know that, you know, Goliath was talking a bunch of crap. He was threatening them, telling them, come on out here, send you a champion. You win, you will rule us. If we win, we rule you. You know, he was actually, he was actually blaspheming God and causing a bunch of fear in the men of Israel. Amen. But here comes this young boy named David. He said, what's wrong with y'all? Don't you know we serve the almighty God? Why y'all men sitting around? You know, so they were amazed at this young boy. Because they said anywhere between the ages of uh, 12 and 15. So here's a 12-year-old looking at grown men. Oh, what's wrong with y'all? Let that fool talk to us like this. Don't you know we serve the most high God? Amen. Let me go out there and whip his tail. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's it I killed a lion and a bear. Come on, Saul. Let me go out there and put him to it. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. So reading that verse 41, I just made a long story, a little bit true. I mean, a little bit down there, I guess. Verse 41. And the Philistines came on and drew near there. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked about, saw David, he disdained him, meaning he was like, y'all sitting in this little run out here? Amen. For he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair continent. In other words, David was fine. Okay. <laughs> handsome man. Verse 43. And the Philistines said unto David, I am a dog that thou cometh to me with staffs. And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. Mm -hmm. Now that means the Philistines cursed David by his God. Mm -hmm. You see that's lowercase g. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the Philistines said to David, come to me. And I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou cometh to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of Israel, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast desired. This day will the Lord deliver. Well, we're going to come back to some of okay. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the what? Is the Lord, and he will give him into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hastened and ran, good God, <laughs> hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Mm. And David put his hand in his bag and took this a stone and sling and smacked the Philistine in his forehead. And that stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Now pay attention to his last verse. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smelt the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Let's keep going because I want to get there. Therefore David, verse 51, therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword. Y'all ain't hear me. And drew it out of the sheep thereof and slew him and cut off his head. Mm -mm, therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted yeah. and pursued the Philistines until thou yeah. came to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. Yeah. And they, won, they wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharon, whatever that is, even unto Gath and unto the Iraq. Let's go back up to verse 40. Right. I want to bring out some spiritual principles for those of you who want to study the word of God. I'm getting ready to show you how to kill giants spiritually. Because see, giants are very, very, they're very, very strong. They can be intimidating. But I tell you right now, there are some giants that you have in your life. See, people tell us that the giant in our life is crack. The giant in our life is drugs and alcohol. The giant in our life is mental illness. The giant in our life is homelessness. I, I, I disagree with that to a certain degree. They are giants. But they're tiny compared to the inner giant that's causing you to get high. Mm. Such as fear, loneliness, lust. These are all the things that go on inside of us that make us want to act outwardly. There's something going on inside your head that says, I need a drink today. All right. That's the giant. You try to find a drink to soothe with the giant is going. Amen. Amen. Are you here? So it can't be the drink that's the giant. It's what made you think, let me go get it. <laughs> What did you think to say? Let me go buy a bag. Amen. Amen. It's that headache every morning because you done got so used to smoking pot that you have to have it now because so your head stop hurting. Amen. Hello. Amen. All right, I'm just going there. Amen. But let's look at verse 40 again. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Now what's a brook? That's a place of water. Water is also an idiom for the word of God. Now, see, I'm going to please y'all. Amen. 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 Water is also 
one in him for the word of God. So when he reached in a brook, he took five what? Truths Amen. from the word of God. Like Amen. Amen. He might have picked up some stones, but when he reached in the word, he pulled out five oh, truths. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. Now, jump down to verse 45. Now, I'm going to show you what these five stones are. Because now here's, here's the life talking crap to him. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that by his God. But David said, I'm going to tell you something about my God. The same thing that Israel should have been saying to him. So let's look at verse 45. Then David, then said David to the Philistine, Thou coming to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. Now here's the first stone. Ready? But I come to thee in the name of the Lord. Here's the first stone. All right? That's your first stone. I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou shalt, whom thou hast defiled. Now watch this. That's the first stone. Here's the second stone, verse 46. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. Now, you got to underline the look. Yes. You know why? Because it's a Hebrew word that stands for shut up. Amen. The Lord will shut you up this day. Mm -hmm. Oh, you here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So David let them know, I'm going to shut you up, and I'm going to shut your mouth from talking junk. Yes. That's what the original Hebrew word for deliverance is. Keep talking, turkey. I'm going to shut you up. Okay. That's the second stone. Now, the third stone he gave him was this. And I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee. You see how he's already prophesied what he's going to do? You already got to speak what you're going to do in the midst of your trouble. Amen. You already got to speak with your victory. You already got to see your victory even before it arrives. Amen? Because we know at the end of the story, mm, I'm going to jump ahead of myself because that's going to be good. Huh? Right. Amen? So, that was the third stone. The third stone was what? I, I, I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. Fourth stone. I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild of the beasts of the earth. That's the fourth stone. Here's the fifth stone. That all the earth may know that there is a God. Here's your five stones. There are five truths. Now, did he need five? I don't think he needed five. All he needed was who said that. All he needed was one. All he needed was one. And we're going to show you that one. Turn over and go over to verse uh, 48. Go down to verse 48. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hasted. Now, watch this. He didn't walk. He didn't stand and wait on him. What did the scripture say? He ran toward him. Do you know how hard it is? Now all he had was a sling and some stones. You know how hard it is to run towards your enemy slinging him. Whoop. Most folks stand here and go like this and let it go. But David was a bad boy. Amen. Remember, he killed a bear and a lion. He was bad and accurate. And accurate. What does it say? It said here in verse 48 again, And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and it came and drew near to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David, and David put his hand in his bag while running. Ain't that so? <laughs> and took this a stone. One. It didn't say all five. A took a stone, slinged it, and smote the Philistine away in the forehead. He didn't dare to settle. Dare to settle. But see, what does the scripture say happened to him? That the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his faith to the earth. Now watch this. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling, and with the stone, and smote the Philistine, and killed him. But there was no sword in David's hand. See, one thing about your giant, you may kill it for a moment. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Here we go. You may kill it for a moment. You may feel like you are feeling victory for a moment. You ain't got high in a few months. You know, you ain't slept around in a few days. You ain't smoked nothing in a while. Boy, I got this thing made. I used to be like that, too. Tell it. Tell it. Come on. Tell it, tell it. I killed the giant. Right. But guess what? He sunk it in his head, but all he did was really knock him out. That's why he said there wasn't no sword. So he couldn't find nothing to kill it. Oh, wait a minute, he got something. You gotta take your own enemy's weapon and kill him. 
Oh, and right, not right. only kill your own giant, you ain't killed your giant till you cut its head off. Right. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Your giant needs to feed it till you cut its head off. Amen. And that means pull for you, spiritually, pull whatever's bothering you up by the root. Because it'll get back up and kill you. Amen. Oh, I went there. I went there. No, then you better turn around and wait on your tail again. Because you didn't carry the head of your issue with you. All right, now. Oh, y'all not hear me. So, in order to kill the giant, you got to cut the head off. You may have defeated it with the word. You may have defeated it with prayer. You may have defeated it with a consciousness that I don't want to deal with it no more. But that ugly thing rose up again. Because you didn't cut the head off. You got to cut the head off. Amen? Amen. Anybody get some out of that? Amen. Amen. Let me discuss what giants are. Okay? Giants are persons of unusual stature who often are reputed to possess great strength and power. The earliest biblical reference to giants is to the Nephilim, born to the daughters of men and the sons of God. Now that's out of notice there. Because sons of God was another term for angels. And the angels came down.